So I wanted to use a sink today, but uh, there was a sign up saying the sink is broken, do not use. And my immediate reaction was, whoa. That doesn't really mean me. That means everyone else, they shouldn't use the sink, but if I just use the sink to wash my hands, no harm, no foul. But underneath the sign was a message in parentheses, that means you. So, oh boy. So I didn't use the sink, even though I really felt that temptation. Like no one was around, I could have used the sink, figured don't use the sink. That means everyone else doesn't really apply to me. The ordinary rules don't apply to me. But uh, guess what? The ordinary rules applied to me. So I wanted to do a video today about the dangers of distracted driving. Like it's really important that you don't get distracted by your cell phone when you're driving, all right? So just give your complete attention to the road. Uh, it's law. In California that you do not touch your cell phone while you're on the road okay even if you're at a red light you shouldn't touch your cell phone driving down the street shouldn't be reading text messages or chat messages on your cell phone you shouldn't be distracted when you're driving that's very dangerous so I just want to do a video about the importance of not getting distracted by making videos while you're driving because you're not only a danger to yourself but you're a danger to everybody else so guys don't don't stream and drive how many people have we lost to streaming and driving okay we could be heroes just for one day if we if we all just decided to desist from streaming and driving it's, it's very dangerous like any distraction like even listening to a cd when you're driving uh, a book on cd that increases your odds of getting in an accident by about 12 percent to just imagine the astronomical increase in chances that you'll get into an accident when you stream when you drive so how many hundreds how many thousands of people die each year because of distracted driving like people texting while they drive or streaming while they drive or smoking while they drive or putting on their makeup while they drive so don't touch your phones guys while you drive Okay, I'm thinking about that David Bowie song. Uh, we could be heroes just for one day. Well, that's a lyric from a song by David Bowie called Heroes. And he wrote it when he saw uh, one of his band members like, making out with a woman who was not his wife uh, by the Berlin Wall in the 1980s before the wall came down. And but we knew that their relationship was doomed, that when, when the band got home, this guy would return to his wife. But uh, he managed to get this song out of it, and, and there's stuff in there about swimming like dolphins. So that's not what I mean. And I don't mean that uh, we should all go out and have affairs and make out by the Berlin Wall. So what I'm talking about is that we all affect other people. We all have an influence. We all matter. You're all individuals. No, everyone, everyone matters. Now, some people have a lot more influence than others, but all of us can be heroic. And all of us have an effect on other people. So Charles Barkley, the famous uh, basketball player and basketball analyst said, uh, I'm not a role model. I don't want to be a role model. Well, we don't have that choice. We're all role models to somebody. This is just how it is. 
and pretty much all of us, one time or another, are heroes to somebody. And pretty much all of us have to be heroic. So, as Viktor Frankl put it in Man's Search for Meaning, great little book, uh, the meaning of life is not a question we ask life. It's a question that life asks us. Every hour, often every minute of the waking day, life is asking us questions, and how we respond to that is how we find our meaning. Uh, particularly how we use time when we don't have pressing exigencies, when we when we carve out spare time, how do we use that time? That defines us, and of course we're going to tend to want to use our spare time at something that we're good at, and then the more time we put into it, the better we get. But uh, we all can be heroes. I remember in my 20s, I was bedridden for six years. I was really sick, my life had fallen apart. Uh, constant headaches and weakness, wasn't able to read for more than about an hour a day maximum, uh, wasn't able to listen to substantive uh, lectures on CD or books on CD or anything like that. I just basically had to there. And uh, could be heroic, I could desist from complaining. And so Complaining during those six years that I was bedridden, I did everything I could to be as little bother to the people around me, the people I was staying with, as possible. So I wasn't constant for things to do things for me. Uh, I pretty much took care of absolutely everything that I could, uh, even when I was chronically ill. And by contrast, a lot of people. They get a headache, and they're, they're just importuning everyone. Oh, could you do this for me? I got a headache. I can't pick up the kids from school. I can't pick up the groceries. I can't uh, clean the kitchen. I can't sweep the floor. I can't vacuum. Uh, could you uh, arrange the angle of the TV for me? Uh, so, isn't that Munchausen? Syndrome, as revealed in that HBO series, uh, Sharp Objects, where people, people cultivate illness because it gives them influence over others. That they, they use their illness to manipulate others into giving them attention, giving them sympathy, doing things for them, and then there's Munchausen by proxy, where even mothers will, will make their kids sick, so the mothers can feel important by caring for their sick kids. So, we can be heroes from <clears throat> in the most dire of circumstances by simply abstaining from complaining, abstaining from being a burden to other people. Like, one toxic person has the power to bring down a room of people, a whole synagogue, a workplace, a suite at work, an apartment complex, uh, can just destroy traffic, make thousands of people late, delayed and inconvenienced. Just one careless person with their driving. So we can be heroes, just keeping our attention on the road, but using our phones while we drive. Not being a downer, not complaining, uh, not not trying to manipulate others. Uh, there, there have been many occasions when I have not been in a capacity to donate a lot of money to my synagogue. So, what I've done often instead is just donate time, like look to be of service to the synagogue. So, even if we don't have money we can often donate a little bit of time. Now, this can be dangerous for chronic under-owners because giving away our time is one of the symptoms of under-owning. Uh, 
uh, when, when we're giving away our time constantly for no good reason uh, as an excuse for not living up to our responsibilities. So for half the people who might see this, giving away their time is a symptom of their chronic underrunning. It's a way to escape from living a full life. It's a way to essentially hide and to stay poor. Uh, on the other hand, even pe people who are poor, they can afford to give a reasonable amount of time back, five hours a week, something like that. And that can be heroic. So abstaining from using foul language around children in particular or just abstaining from bringing down the quality of a conversation, the quality of a mood around you, even if you're in a filthy mood, just abstaining from passing that on to others, that can be heroic. Like there are so many opportunities to be heroic. Just say, good morning, how are you? <laughs> when you enter your workplace. And when other people say that to you, you greet them instead of just ignoring them. Okay, so looking people in the eye when you greet them. Good morning, how are you? Uh, that's a little bit of uh, courtesy. Heroic is uh, probably a little too strong for that type of behavior. But uh, there's just so much obnoxious behavior that goes on on a daily basis. If you all share a refrigerator at work and you plunder other people's food and drink, obviously that's theft and it's disgusting. Or if you let your food go bad in the, in the sweet refrigerator, that's disgusting. If you don't clean up after yourself, that's disgusting. If uh, you have roommates and you, you make you know, disruption, uh, you make too much noise late at night or early in the morning, uh, that's disgusting. Depending on where you park your car, if you just park your car an extra foot or two in front or behind where you normally do, you can often allow space for someone else to park. I think all these little things can, can be heroic. And uh, if you bathe once a day, that can be an improvement on people who don't. So, what's that saying? Uh, think globally, act locally. There are a hundred opportunities to, to just, just do little kindnesses or just meet up your responsibilities so that you can avoid being a drag on everyone else. Like if you're in a chat room, don't say anything that you wouldn't say if uh, you're in person. Like a lot of people use chat rooms as an excuse to be a jerk. Okay, that's, that's not heroic. Uh, when you get good service from a store, from a representative of a company to, to send a letter praising the, the quality of the service you receive, that's, that's paying it forward, that's doing good deed. It makes the world a little better place when, when we reward the good, when we encourage the good, when we read a good blog post or we see a good uh, YouTube stream and we leave positive comment, expressing our gratitude. If we reward the good, that's making the world a better place. That's heroic. So, yesterday I was talking about Kathy's song. Today I looked it up. Kathy's song by Simon and Garfunkel. So you see I have come to doubt all that I once held is true. I stand alone without beliefs. The only truth I know is you. And as I watch the drops of rain weave their weary paths and die, I know that I am like the rain. There, but for the grace of you, go I. Well, anyway, that was written about a real woman in the UK, Kathy Song by Simon and Garfunkel. And she's now a grandma. I think she's in her 60s. But she had a relationship with Paul Simon in the 1960s before he became a star. Uh, when he was playing the pub scene in England. And Kathy features in three 
songs by Simon and Garfunkel. Not just uh, Kathy's song, but America. She features in there and one other. So she had quite an effect on Paul Simon, but she could not handle the public scrutiny that came with having a relationship with this guy. So that's why she ended it. But uh, she went on to a relationship or marriage of over 40 years. She's a grandmother. I think she had three or four kids. Uh, she's retirement age, but works as an administrative assistant. Uh, I think she walks to work. Uh, so there's a nice story about Kathy's song and the real woman who inspired Kathy's song. What, what an just absolutely hauntingly beautiful song by Simon and Garfunkel. I just bought it on iTunes. I've probably listened to it a dozen times over the past 24 hours. So she she had heroic qualities. She inspired three great songs by uh, Paul Simon. So we can be heroes just for one day.